Hey guys, welcome back to the Midwinter Cut series. My name is Andrew Killian, and what you're going to be seeing in this video today is I'm showing you guys my weight loss journey. I started the cut at 213 pounds. My end goal is to get down to 180. Each week I do something different. I pick a topic and I stick to that for the whole week. I have hit a little bit of a weight loss stall the past two weeks. I haven't had forward momentum. So this week, instead of doing a challenge, I'm just gonna go straight for what I know works. I'm going for tip top nutrition. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like through my meals. At the start of this week, I'm at around 203 pounds. I'm really trying to push my way into the 190s. If I can get to 199, I would be super happy. So how this works is each week, I take my initial measurements. I start out with a weigh-in then I measure my waist with a tape measure and I wrap that up with a physique rotation at the end of the week we do the exact same thing we want to see how much progress I made and we want to do that by tracking these variables the strategy for this week I'm not going vegan I'm not doing carnivore I'm not even doing keto but this time around I'm just going for tip-top nutrition I'm trying to pair up fatty meats with high fiber fruits and vegetables give you a quick example of what that's gonna look like I might take ground beef and pair that up with peas the peas are giving me just enough fiber and then the ground beef has my proteins and fat. Throughout this week, I'm not using any oil, zip, nada. I don't like oils and here's why. Even the oils that we're told are healthy and good for your heart, things like coconut oil, avocado oil, even, you know, olive oil, they're all still 110 calories per tablespoon. And I'm not even getting into the bad oils yet, like soybean oil or canola oil. All of these across the board are 110 calories. And once you add it to your food, it disappears. You can't really see it. On top of that, let's all be honest here. No one's actually using a tablespoon to measure oil. You usually just eyeball it and it's a lot easier to get into three or 400 extra calories than you might think. This is especially true even with like making salads and things like that. The calories come quick and you can't see them. So for me, I can manage this variable by simply not having it. If I want fats, I target fish, beef, or eggs. Any of these three are going to be great. Now I've always believed if you want to have a 2000 calorie physique, you've got to have a 2000 calorie diet. So on top of eating very healthy, I am going to start monitoring my calories more closely, which means I'm going to start weighing my food again. Part of the reason I had these weight loss stalls, in my opinion, I haven't actually been that strict yet with weighing out the food, and I think it's time that I need to get back to my roots. In addition to that, I'm also going to be doing outdoor cardio. Here in Michigan, it's starting to warm up. Once it's around 50 degrees, that's good enough for me to start going on outdoor runs again, so I'm excited to start doing that. So with that, let's head over there. I'm going to show you guys my initial weigh-in and my initial waist measurements. All right, see you on the other side. So I've got here in this pot is gonna be my meal prep for the week. I have a hybrid job, but I go in the office three days a week. So three meals in this bad boy is perfect. If you watched my last video, you'll know. I did vegan for a week where I had mostly just rice and peas through the week, especially when I was at work. This in the pot right here, very similar, but the difference is we've got ground beef in there. Gonna have that at work and at night, we're gonna have different meals. But the general idea is to have all whole foods in all my meals. That's the most important thing when it comes to weight loss, just staying away from processed foods. Even if I'm having a little bit of vegetables and a little bit of fruit, I'm okay with that. As much as I like doing keto and carnivore, I'm almost just as happy having fruit and a little bit of vegetables as well, just to get things more well-rounded and also get that much needed fiber in there. Fiber helps keep you moving, especially in that department, if you know what I'm saying. Just got done with a three mile run and wouldn't you know it, the food is ready to go. Off topic, but I'm so glad that it's warming up here in Michigan. Can finally do outdoor cardio again. I think that's gonna really accelerate my fat loss. I'm gonna try and have an A plus diet through this week, but doing a couple miles outside and running, it's gonna really make that easy. So I'm gonna pan this up. We'll see how much I got. The plan was to have three days worth of food here. I think I got a little bit more than that. So if I have to have some of this at home, no biggie. So there we go, just nice and simple. Ground beef, green peas, there's a little bit of brown rice on there. What this is gonna help me do is get a little bit of energy during my workouts from a little bit of the carbs. It's not a lot, but it's going to be enough to actually make a pretty good difference in the gym. Aside from that, it does taste actually pretty good. I'm gonna top layer this with sriracha sauce. This will give it some extra kick. And aside from that, I mean, this is a complete meal. By the way, another thing I feel like I've just gotta mention, I don't oil up my food at all. If you look at this, 
It's actually unseasoned ground beef and peas. I'm gonna put sriracha on top. Aside from that, I'm not adding a whole lot to this. It's gonna really help keep the calories down. It also helps me kind of keep track of how much I'm really eating. When you add oil, any type of oil-based flavoring, I don't care if it's olive oil or coconut oil, once you put that in the food, it disappears. You have no real idea just how much extra calories the oil's in. And I'm not just saying that metaphorically. I mean in real life. Once the oil's in there, you don't know how much that meal has calorie-wise. So I skip it all together. And besides, ground beef is already fatty enough. You really don't need to add oil to it. Look at that. Just a perfect meal. We're going to have other meals throughout the week too, but this is definitely what I'm bringing to work for the next three days. So just got done with a five mile run. I'm about to show you guys a little secret of mine. When I was cutting for bodybuilding shows, I would have this every night. It's super low calorie and it's really good for shedding weight and basically keeping weight off as well. So keep this between us guys. This is, is kind of like my hidden gem here. Insider knowledge here guys, here's what we're doing. Got this Greek yogurt right here. I also got my food scale, by the way. Pretty important. I'll explain that in a second. We're going to take this plain, unflavored Greek yogurt. Going to mix it with my favorite blend of berries. And I've also got these because I just can't get enough blueberries. I'm going to be throwing both of these in the bowl. I'm going to show you guys what we're planning to do here. Greek yogurt, 100 calories, 170 grams. You see that? <laughs> I'm hoping that this uh, isn't blurry for you guys. So we can have 200 calories pretty good. I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like here. It's gonna blow your mind. So not only is Greek yogurt super low calorie, it's also super high protein. For 100 calories, you're getting, I think 16 grams of protein and then like eight grams of carbs. It's not exactly ketogenic, but it's pretty damn low calorie, which in its own right is pretty impressive. So I'm looking to get 200 calories worth in this bowl, which would be 340 grams. I just hit 360. We're gonna round that down, guys. That's 200 calories to me. Next up, I'm not putting any flavorings in this, by the way. These frozen berries have so much flavor in them. Once you crush these up and toss them in the bowl, you don't need any added sugar, trust me. Now, I don't actually measure the berries because berries are so low calorie that it's almost like not even worth tracking. The only exception to that would be if you're juicing them. Juicing is another story because when you juice something into a liquid form, you can jam a ton of calories into a liquid, whereas when it's still in its solid state, not quite the case. Another advantage of having it frozen, when it's frozen like this, you eat it slower because it's kind of like rock hard. It adds as a sort of deterrent to like speed eating. Usually a lot of the reasons you overeat isn't because you like were super hungry, but because you were just like shoveling the food down. The slower you can eat the food, the better. And this recipe right here takes a solid 20 minutes to eat because these are usually frozen. Now as a finishing touch, we're gonna throw a small amount of pumpkin seeds in here. I'm not doing this for flavor. There's actually a scientific reason why I'm doing this. So you guys are gonna have to forgive me, but I can't remember off the top of my head which amino acid Greek yogurt is deficient in. But I do know it's deficient in one of them. I'll have it in the caption somewhere here. Whatever that amino acid is, pumpkin seeds makes up for that. So I'm not gonna put a lot in here. I'm just putting enough to well round this out. Otherwise you don't have a complete protein. The pumpkin seeds will help with that. So I'm going to stir this up, get this thing ready to eat. You guys, look, this is roughly 300 calories, probably still less for all of that. All of that in the bowl. That's insane. To get to 3,000 calories, you'd have to eat 10 of these. There's no way you could eat 10 of these in a day. This trick right here is like 8+. Plus. And I would say it's S tier. S tier for weight loss. Super amazing. When I was dieting for bodybuilding shows, I would have this every single night before bed or like late at night to keep me away from the things that are going to do more damage. Because let's face it, a lot of times we binge eat at night. We're good during the day, bad at night. It's going to take me some time to stir this up, so I'm going to stir this up, eat it up. Tomorrow, I'm going to have a little bit of a cheat meal. And I say cheat because it's going to have some processed foods in it. You'll see what I mean by that. Aside from that, everything I've had to eat this week has been... Whole Foods, out of a produce bag, not a plastic bag, which I guess is still kind of plastic, but I hope you get the point. So I'll see you guys in the morning for my cheat meal breakfast. Talk to you then. All right, it's Sunday. I'm gonna start preparing my cheat meal. Here's what we are making today. We're making Krusty's pancakes. So Krusty's pancakes, definitely on the processed foods, but what we're gonna do to make things a little bit better Going to be adding unflavored whey protein isolate to it. I'll be able to make a lot more pancakes with less pancake mix by adding that protein in. 
as bad as this is, it's actually not that terrible. 210 calories per serving. I think that's a half cup. So in the bag, I've got a full cup. That's 420. We add a scoop of isolate protein that bumps it up to 520. Calories wise, 520 isn't really, in my opinion, cheat meal territory, but it is totally refined carbohydrates that have zero nutritional value. Not the healthiest, but it is, you know, a little treat that I like to have, especially on the weekends. It kind of helps with dieting and things like that, where you just have a little bit of something to get you through the week. I'll show you what's crusty. You'd think they'd come up with a better name. What kind of name is crusty? Crusty's pancakes, man. Crusty's pancakes. So this is gonna take me a few minutes to mix. Just trying to get it nice and runny. I'm gonna put it in my little cast iron pan. On top of that, I'm adding a very, very small amount of bacon grease just to keep the pan no stick. I really don't want to add a whole lot of fat to this meal since it is super carb heavy. If you're gonna be doing the cheat meal, it's good to either go all carbs or all fat and try to kind of keep things, you know, one or the other. So while I mix this, I've been doing a lot of outdoor cardio this week. I'm not a big fan of doing cardio in the gym. It's just boring, very time consuming, and it's not very exciting, especially running. I don't really like running on treadmills. I never have. It's not something I'll do. But running through the neighborhood's totally different story. Now that it's like 40 to 50 degrees every day, it's bearable for running, which is actually nice because when it gets really hot, it's actually hard to run. And if it's too cold, it's also hard to run. But that 40 to 50 degrees is really kind of the sweet spot. Been running every single day this week, trying to work up a level of conditioning where I could run for an hour uninterrupted. I'm getting pretty close. I did five miles uninterrupted yesterday. I'll probably do another five miles today. As much as I love dieting, cardio is a great fat loss accelerator. And it also gives you some wiggle room to be able to do stuff like this from having very unhealthy pancakes. Despite the fact I did add protein to them, the unbleached flour is completely void of nutrients. But that's okay. It's Sunday morning and we're having a good time. Now, as a finishing touch, I am going to be adding a little bit of organic maple syrup. For me, it's very important to get the organic kind because non-organic maple syrup is really just corn syrup. When it comes to buying maple syrup, I always try to look for the authentic, real deal. Not only is this better tasting, it actually has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it, like magnesium and zinc, that you're not going to get with all that really cheap corn syrup flavor. Spoiler alert, if the bottle is cheap, that means it's corn syrup. If it's expensive, it's probably organic. It's probably the real deal. It's not going to be 100% the case all the time, so just put a little extra effort in and just make sure you read the labels and you'll be good to go. This stuff I got from Costco, it's definitely organic. I'll check in with you guys pretty shortly here for my end of the week wrap up. Here we are at the end of the week. I just got done taking my measurements. The weight on the scale didn't move as much as I wanted it to. I started the week around 203, I ended the week around 203. Partially because yesterday I did have that cheat meal with the pancakes. Later on for dinner, I met up with some friends. We went to an Indian food restaurant. I don't mean this to be disrespectful, but when it comes to Indian food, Pretty much all Indian food, in my opinion, is cheat food. I don't know what they put in there to make it taste so good, but I can't imagine strictly healthy. But even still, because I had the heavy carbs in the morning, I didn't have carbs with my Indian food, but I still do feel like I'm holding a little bit of water this morning. That would lead to a little bit of the weight increase. This is where the tape measure comes in such handy. A lot of the times we get frustrated with these non-scale victories. If you take out the tape measure, you might get a victory there, which I did this week. I started the week a little bit over 32 inches. Now I'm a little into the 31. You can see in the video I have the hash mark. Broken that barrier, maybe lost about half inch off the waist, which is really awesome. It shows that I am actually making forward progress even when the scale doesn't move. That being said, the scale actually was lower through the week up until the point where I had that cheat meal. So going forward, next week, I'm going to be going all seafood. So that means I'm going to be having basically anything from the sea, sardines, tuna, salmon, they're all game. In addition to that, I do want to have a little bit of fiber in my diet. So I am going to have the green peas that I have been having. The green peas really come in handy, getting that fiber in there. And they're also a little bit higher on the carbohydrate content, which in my purposes is actually pretty good. Now that I'm doing outdoor runs again, I've been running every single day, three miles minimum. Having a little bit of carbs in my system is actually a really good thing. Helps get through those runs. Now, I know that there are people out there that work out on keto and carnivore. It's just my opinion that you perform better 
better when you have a little bit of carbohydrates in the system, but not so much that you start packing on fat. A lot of the times the carbohydrates are the best when they're in moderation. So look forward to that guys. If you made it this far, don't forget to like the video. Make sure to subscribe. Also ring that notification bell so that you can get updated on the next video. Let me know what you guys want to see. I love getting ideas from you guys. It's a lot of fun to try things I may not have necessarily thought of when you guys give me ideas. I have a lot of fun with it and I hope that you guys are having fun watching these videos. For now, I've been Andrew Fillion. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.